Tag TV and Tag Radio. Technology now has a voice of innovation and information. Get it on www.tagtvonline.com. It's been a wild year for entrepreneurs and C-level execs alike. Despite the ups and downs in global financial markets, mergers and acquisition activity has continued robustly. Clean technology has taken hold as an important piece of the puzzle, and new entrants into the market have established themselves right alongside more traditional players. Businesses, as well as most organizations, are quickly shifting from hierarchical processes to network ones. Software as a service, communications as a service, infrastructure as a service. Nearly every facet of human activity is transformed in some way by the emergent fabric of interconnection. Down or up, the future is full of the potential for reorganization, and that leads to dramatic improvements in efficiency and productivity. There will be many ways in which the current crisis will change business and the economy, most of them hard to predict, but one theme is already emerging. Business is becoming technology itself. Greetings, everyone. It's Tuesday, November 18, 2008, and this is Tech Talk with Technology Association of Georgia President Tino Mantella. I'm your guest host, Frank Baia, with a special edition focusing on corporate IT and the economic crisis. A look into the future as businesses are becoming more like technology itself, more adaptable, more interwoven, and more specialized. Greet Roger Terrell, Chief Information Officer for North Highland, one of the world's premier management consulting firms, building a global name for themselves by blooming right where they were planted. That's right, right here in Atlanta, working within the city, which has already offered them the ability to build a strong client relationship and local respect a constituency strategy that has allowed experienced, established consultants to work within their home regions connected by shared principles and high standards. Since 1992, they have grown to 17 North American offices with a global network of Highland Worldwide Partners. Roger is a 20-year veteran in the information technology field. Prior to North Highland, he served as a vice president of new technology for ChoicePoint. A highly respected and successful industry exec and consultant in the financial and telecom industries, he specializes in architecture, development, and IT leadership. Okay, what will be the biggest technological impact on business in 2009? And how about the role of the CIO itself? How will that be changed by future events? Corporate IT, the crisis and the challenges and the opportunities of 2009 as we Tech Talk with North Island CIO, Roger Terrell. Roger, welcome to Tech Talk. Thanks. It's great to talk to you. Well, Roger, let's kind of, uh, I guess, maybe start right at the key spot. You know, we we talk a lot of times about that that hot spot or the key zone, that mid-sized firm. As a CIO of a mid-sized firm, what are your top imperatives for 2009? Hmm. That's a good one. Um, I think... My first focus, probably the most exciting one, is really next generation communication and collaboration. Um, I have a story I like to tell. I have a friend who backpacked by herself through Africa this past year, and you know she spent times in villages with no running water, but she was able to keep her internet blog updated the whole time, mm. which is just incredible to me. So I'm reading these blog entries that say great things like, you know, had to borrow a bucket from a villager to carry water so I could take a bath. And I just think that's amazing, and that says a lot about where we're headed as a connected world. So we're talking about enterprise versions of Twitter and obviously the the implementation of clouds now, which is the big hot topic. Exactly. Uh, And, of course, this is obviously a problem a lot of companies can identify with. You mentioned in your intro that North Highland is in 17 cities, global reach. Well, obviously, many companies are in a similar situation. And I think that a lot of companies have made early technology investments in these areas because they recognize the problem. But a lot of the early investments have been uh, what you might call incomplete solutions, or maybe you would say they haven't – They've only been partial successes. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, in all fairness, there probably wasn't, I don't know about vision, but really wasn't the need to interconnect all of the different players in a way that both technology and the opportunity presents itself now. That's right. And I think that the combination of the technology that's coming into play, 
that's really kind of coming into its own now. And the next generation of workers, these kind of digital natives uh, that we all know are coming into the workforce now that, that use technology just as part of their life and don't even think about it, mm -hmm. that combination coming together is really pushing us uh, in this area. So I'm really pushing for a full suite of unified communications, distributed work group technologies, knowledge sharing, and so on and on, all those things, but not last year's or the year before, but the new generation of technologies that's really integrated and seamless for the user that will let us really do this business wherever we are without thinking about it. You know, uh, one of the things that uh, I think is a common thread that we often hear, though, is the uh, cultures being willing to accept all of these capabilities and being able to really adapt to them. I know that's a challenge in many cases, but let's talk a little bit about now in terms of the uh, economic crisis and how you plan for next year. I mean, how do you deal with the economic crisis in your planning for next year? Sure. Uh, you know, there was a survey that came out just in September that said something like 75% of IT budgets will be the same or higher in 2009 compared to this year. Mm -hmm. and of course, I'm willing to bet that uh, even though only two months have gone by, if you were to redo that survey today, it would probably have a really different number. <laughs> but I don't think that there's a magic solution for getting through a downturn like that, but there are some very practical kind of common sense things you should be doing. And obviously the number one thing is focus on what's really important to your business. We, we always talk about the need for the CIO to be aligned with the business, but that's much more important than ever during the tough times. You should be intimately familiar with the business strategy of your company. You should be focusing your investments accordingly, and of course, hopefully, You've, you've helped your senior leaders uh, get that comf comfort level with you before the crisis um, in terms of you know, knowing that you're really uh, intimately familiar with the business strategy. But if that wasn't possible, then you know, this is a good time for you to step up and really show what you're made of. You know, I'd, I'd submit how 20 minutes ago it is to even say that the uh, CIO is in a passive role, that he's a go-to guy to implement something that came out of the senior management uh, boardroom rather than being a, a equal player that's sitting at the table in terms of actually planning some of the actual direction for the competitiveness of the company. That's absolutely right. Let's talk a little bit about looking into the future as far as the technologies that you think. You mentioned a couple in terms of collaboration and communication, but uh, which ones do you think will have the biggest impact on business beyond uh, 2009? Oh, yeah. I think there are a couple of technologies that are actually very real today and have real use, but maybe haven't reached widespread adoption or general acceptance yet. And I think we've seen enough of them to know, though, that they're going to have a big impact in the next maybe 18 to 24 months. And the first of those, I would say, is cloud computing. I mean, mm -hmm. if, you've, if you've kept up with any big publication, uh, then you've already seen this. It's already in use. It's definitely having successes. But it's pretty a tiny percentage of the operational picture as it stands today. You know, there's still a few issues that have to be addressed, um, at least to my satisfaction. But they are being addressed, and we can see that you know in the next 18 to 24 months, cloud computing is definitely going to be a much bigger part of the picture. And then the second thing I would say, um, again, it's already out there, already in use, but not uh, not a part of everybody's day in and day out operation yet is a client-side virtualization. Uh, you know, we talked earlier about communication and collaboration, but virtualization of desktops and applications will let us carry that personalized experience around the world so that even if you're at your great aunt's house over the holidays using a borrowed computer, you'll still be able to have your personal experience and get to all that great communication technology. You know, when we got involved with supply chain and ERP years ago and, and, and really got in time, just in time and those kind of issues, um, everything kind of centered around uh, from source to consumption and eliminating the events that occurred so that your uh, activity, the efficiency could be there, but the margins could increase. I guess a lot of what you're talking about now, especially with clouds, once they're fully developed, and maybe go into just for our listeners, just uh, I, I can't imagine anybody in the technology field not being fully versed on, on what we're talking about, but maybe just cover that just briefly as to what we're talking about when we talk about clouds. Sure. You know, well, again, you mentioned also in the intro uh, everything as a service, right, mm -hmm. uh, software, infrastructure, everything else. You know, in this case, we're actually talking about abstracting out the data center itself, right, so that um, all of the day-in and day-out operational services of our company, uh, we don't care where they reside. 
uh, keeping it high level. Uh, mm-hmm. pu- pushing it out into the cloud means, uh, from an infrastructural perspective, not having to uh, not having to own it. Now, not to put you on a spot, but I mean, just to take it just a little bit further out into the future. I mean, uh, you know, you've uh, certainly are aware of these viral expansion loops, these bundling, if you will, of of employees, vendors, and uh, uh, and customers. Um, is that anything close, or is that something that's still pretty much uh, pretty far away? I, I mean, I've actually seen some of these startup organizations that have grown from zero to thirty, fifty million dollars are being studied now at MIT for their business models. Sure, and I, I think that's another good example of something that's absolutely real is absolutely coming. Uh, I'm not sure if I would, if I would put it in the same time frame, mm-hmm. um, but you know, these things are always there's always a next step, and I think that that's that's one step further out. So, I mean, now we get to the, 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 the key player and I guess the hot spot, you know, when you really are sitting on a hot, hot seat under all of these uh, potentials and, and obviously uh, I would say an environment of, of opportunity to reorganize the CIO role. Um, you know, for some time there's been a lot of discussions about the changing nature of that role, but good grief under what we're talking about and, and so much change. What do you think of the future of the CIO role, CIO role itself? Well, we talked earlier about, as you know, everybody says, there's a strong need for the CIO to be aligned with the business, and we know for a fact from surveying the industry that a good percentage of new CIOs are coming out of a business background instead of a technology background. Mm. Um, and, uh, of course, a lot of people are predicting that that trend will, will continue. Um, and I think that's true. We will, we will see that continue. But I also think that we're going to see that distinction of business versus technology in this role blurring until it's not really such a meaningful distinction in the first place. Again, I'm kind of going to go back to that uh, mention earlier of the digital native generation that's coming along. Um, these are these are people who just don't think that way. Um, you know, they they don't think in terms of the business versus the technology. And I think when that generation works its way up through the ranks into the leadership roles, um, that 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 divide is really going to just not be meaningful. And, and I guess when, let's let's go into a little bit more about this digital native generation of employees. Uh, you know, when, and also even I guess uh, the work environment. I'm, I'm I'm guessing now the CIO has got to not only appreciate the technological capabilities, but as we were talking about earlier, maybe some of the cultural ability to accept uh, certain business practices or methods within an organization. But then compound that by these younger generations, these digital natives. Um, bringing in new work ethics, uh, like you mentioned, where I think there might have been a time like the uh, Corona beer commercial where I might have wanted to take my beeper or cell phone and throw it across the water, and now it's a case where uh, I don't think any of us can really live or travel without some connectivity. That's absolutely right. And, of course, this isn't an issue just for technology organizations, but uh, because it affects, you know, these workers are coming into all aspects of business. But... um, we still have to put in place the tools and the infrastructure that these so-called digital natives need. Uh, and, uh, you know, obviously I emphasize, especially around communication and collaboration, as we mm. already talked about, but that's really not the whole picture. Um, you know, we need to be in touch with the human issues and the management issues that always come with generational differences. Um, and one of the things that I think is a great resource, a lot of companies will have some sort of diversity and inclusion program going on. I think it's a very good uh, thing for the CIO or other IT leaders to get involved in those programs because it's a great source of information and ideas. These programs do typically focus on the human side of these generational differences. Uh, but, of course, they also deal with other types of differences. I mean, IT resources are very likely to be globally diverse, um, and these these programs can give you a lot of information about helping you grapple with regional differences and cultural differences. Um, so it's a great resource. I think you should be plugged into it if you're not. So obviously one of the things that you're advocating is preparing. I mean, I, you know, certainly not just analyzing and taking a look, but really taking a look at the internal culture in terms of, you know, I guess a, a fertilized environment for these activities to not only be engaged, not only be uh, eventually brought into the organization, but then the kind of personnel that need to be attracted in order to make them all be implemented properly. That's right. Always be prepared. Think for the future. 
Well, again, with the future moving so quickly and things changing so fast and new opportunities, both in technology and business opportunities, um, maybe just uh, one quick question to ask you because you're so involved and so close to the changes that are, are happening. Um, next big thing, something that you've uh, seen or heard about that you really think uh, – uh, is right at the edge and maybe not necessarily ready for prime time, but it's kind of uh, really made you aha when you looked at it? Hmm. I mean, besides uh, the things we already talked about. Yeah, well, I'm guessing, you know, what, like, say, for example, even the hologram business that was happening in the political campaign. I know that uh, Scientific Atlanta has been playing around with telepresence and that kind of thing. I guess the idea of true virtualization and the idea that uh, – at some point, uh, even something as far-fetched as a Star Trek beaming, maybe not physically breaking down cells, but certainly from a holographic standpoint, instead of that being exotic and uh, something that uh, is for entertainment purposes, could very well be um, you know, an, a, an edgy thing for collaboration within the next few years, the next decade for sure. Well, um, listen, again, some of this stuff is, is right on target in terms of the most cutting edge, and yet some of it is things that we hear about when we're out networking and, and even in, in the uh, boardrooms. Uh, one thing for sure, and that is uh, the opportunities are unbelievable for change and reorganization. And, and thank you so much for some of your insights, Roger. We've been ro dealing with, speaking with rather Roger Tur Turrell. Roger is the CIO for North Highlands uh, Management Consulting. And, Roger, thank you so much for joining us on Tech Talk today. It's been great talking with you.